After the World Cup, Bobby Robson took over as England manager. There wouldn't be many dull moments with him around. Give us a ball. Thank you. Never handle it when you play football. Always keep it. So when I set off from here, hey, two little touches. The greatest job you can ever have, I think, is to be the football manager of your national team. I knew it was the most important job in football, it certainly is the most prestigious. But it had its headaches. Robson's first stop was Newcastle. He went to see their new signing, the England captain, Kevin Keegan. Bobby Robson is a Geordie, he's a Newcastle United fan. And he, he came to watch my debut at St James's Park. He won 1-0 and I scored uh, in the second half. And I mean, the place was just rocking. I mean, you'd thought we'd won the European Cup. Afterwards, he came down and he, he asked to see me. And he said, what a day, what a day for the Geordies. Oh, if you can keep that up and things. He's very excited. And he said, I'll see you soon. I don't want to say too much about the Kevin Keegan situation, except that I had to make a, cr a critical decision about him, as he will have to do with England players now that he has the job. With him saying, I'll see you soon, I, I didn't even, you know, really know what day the squad was announced, but a journalist come up to me on the th Thursday after training, came over as coming off all sweated and that after a training session, and he said, you're not in the England squad. What upset me was the way I heard about it. I mean, a 10p phone call from the FA is not a lot to ask. Had I just played one or two games for England, I probably wouldn't have been so miffed about it. I read it, I found out it through you people, through the media. And that's what annoyed me, not the fact I'm left out, I'm, I'm big enough to accept that, you know, that at 31, as I said, you, you, you know, and a new manager, he's got new ideas. But I made a decision that, um, that Kevin would find it very difficult to be in the next World Cup in 86, which was, was going to be my first uh, World Cup. And I, I think if it had just called me into the squad, pulled me to one side and said, look, new era, I want to pick a new captain, I want to go down a new road, thanks for what you've done, blah, blah, blah. I would have shook his hand and just said, hey, you know, if you need me, you know where I am. I didn't have anything to say to him. I was a new manager in a new job looking at new players. Kevin had never played for me, so I didn't have to say, sorry, Kevin, but I have to leave you out. It's happened to other players before. I don't suppose I should be stupid enough to think they'd be any different with me, but uh, just a little personal phone call, say, hey, you're going to be left out and... Um, thanks for everything you've done or something. But it's taught me a lesson now I'm England manager. You know, I do phone every player. It's not easy sometimes when you're leaving players out. I can understand why he didn't want to phone me. I find it difficult. But I'm, I'm determined to do it because I don't want any player to feel like I felt. Kevin Keegan's 70s style perm gave way to even worse haircuts in the 80s. England's fortunes didn't change. Bobby Robson was finished almost before it begun. There was no Keegan to save England now. are making their feelings heard. Robson was due to take his team on tour to Brazil. It didn't look promising. Before the tour, I was advised by certain people in the press not to go on it, pull out of it, because all you do is suffer defeat. And we went with a young, inexperienced side, one being John Barnes. John Barnes and another naive young player, Mark Chamberlain, were persuaded to pose for a picture on the Copacabana. Well, me and Mark had gone down there to take some pictures, uh, and of course all the waves came up and splashed us, so it was quite a nice picture because the waves came up. The photographer wanted us to juggle the ball and do some tricks with some kids, and this is before the game. So these are two England players with our Engl England kit on, and when we're trying to keep the ball up in sand and stuff, I mean, we're useless. So of course all the kids were much better than we were, 
Now, I suppose if I'd scored the goal before, they would have accepted it. If you'd like to score a marvellous goal, where would you like to score it? Against Brazil and America now? For sure. Tidying the box to Terry Fennick. Looks for the long ball, left foot is. Moser climbing all over Haitley, but Haitley keeps possession safely on his chest. What I see on film is like a bit of an out-of-body experience. Even when I'm watching it, I'm trying to think, when I've gone past that player, do you remember doing that? I don't know, remember anything about it. John Barnes on the left side. He went past one defender and I kept saying to myself, pass it. John Barnes on the left side, comes inside the Andrew. He could let one go in. Then he went past another defender and I thought, go on, pass it now. John Barnes on the left side, comes inside the Andrew. He could let one go here. He certainly could let one go. He keeps it on his right foot. And then I remember the goalkeeper putting the ball to one side and putting it back in the net. Anything in between, I don't remember. John Barnes on the left side, comes inside the Andrew. He could let one go here. He certainly could let one go. He keeps it on his right foot. He's gone all the way through. What a brilliant goal by John Barnes. That was quite magnificent. That's, that's forever. That's for immortality. So it was one of the greatest goals I've ever seen in my life. He threatened, he teased, he cajoled the defence. That is a magnificent way to open your scoring career for England. What a fine goal. From a young age, that obviously elevated my status and the expectation and the expectancy level then increased tenfold. Uh, and I was expected to do that every time I got the ball. Something really rather nasty, but he doesn't... Uh... Incredibly, England were beating Brazil in Rio. Then it just got silly. It was a fantastic day for England and John Barnes. The flight home the next day was not. Well, there are four or five national fronts agitators, if that's what you want to call them, shouting out abuse and stuff like that. I mean, it was just general. I can't even remember anything specific that went on, but we got the gist of it. They were shouting in the plane that England had not won 2-0 that day, but they had won 1-0, and they completely discounted the goal by John Barnes. I mean, how sick can you be? I was told that, you know, by non-certain terms by some people who were there, that I shouldn't be playing for England, and we only beat Brazil 1-0 because you scored and black people shouldn't play for England. But that didn't dampen my thirst for wanting to play for England at all. As they arrived back at Heathrow, the England squad seemed unconcerned about the National Front taunts which had been aimed at their two coloured players, Mark Chamberlain and John Barnes. Yeah. I was a bit astonished to get it in, in international football, but I mean, you just have to put up with it. It just seemed to be an awful long way to go as well to, for that sort of behaviour. Did it surprise you? So 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 far? Well, the majority went just to support England, but it's just That's a right. few. You really put them That's right, the majority are, are OK, but it's just a, a few. Nothing, generally speaking, in football or life generally surprises me. You know, we would like it all to be a lovely, happy place, but that's not the reality of it. And uh, so I understood that's the reality of, of some people's lives and some people's existence and, and the way people are. The result in Brazil transformed England. Haitley, Barnes, Haitley again, and he's made a chance here, has Haitley, and he's scored! Wilkins is in there, and Robson! What a goal! What is Anzai! What nothing! They qualified in style for the 1986 World Cup. That's first-class finishing. And they discovered a new striker. Lineker! A superb piece of finishing by Gary Lineker of Leicester City. 